aqueous equilibrium. First, we're going to talk about what's called the common ion effect. Let's consider the following reaction. Aqueous hydrofluoric acid producing hydrogen ions and fluoride ions. Now initially in the solution, we would just have a hydrofluoric acid. But the reaction is going to proceed towards the right. Partial dissociation is going to take place. And we're going to produce hydrogen ions and fluoride ions. Eventually, that reaction will start to proceed towards the left and will reproduce some of that hydrofluoric acid that we had dissociated. And eventually, we'll reach equilibrium. But what would happen if we were at equilibrium and we added additional hydrogen ions or fluoride ions to the solution? Well, remember Le Chatelier's principle says that if we increase the concentration of something on the right side of the equation, it's going to shift the equilibrium towards the left, which means that the percent dissociation of hydrofluoric acid would go down with the addition of hydrogen ions or fluoride ions. The shift is called the common ion effect. We're adding more of one of the ions already in the solution, and this makes the solution less acidic by inhibiting the hydrofluoric acid from dissociating. This will alter our pH. However, we're going to see that the problems are going to be the same steps that we've been working on all along. So let's look at just a simple weak acid problem. We want to calculate the pH and the percent dissociation of a 0 0.200 molar acetic acid solution. And it tells us that the Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. All right, so that tells us that we're looking at a weak acid. And the first thing we want to consider is what are the major species that are in this particular solution. And in this case, we have acetic acid which has a Ka value of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And we have water, which has a Kw value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So that means we're going to start with our acetic acid, and we're going to write down our uh, reaction for the dominant species in our solution. So we're going to have CH3COOH, forming hydrogen ions and acetate ions. And then that reverse reaction is going to take place and we're going to uh, eventually establish equilibrium. So we know what the concentration of the acetic acid is initially. We want to calculate what the concentration of the hydrogen ion is at equilibrium. So we're going to make a nice chart. Our initial concentration of acetic acid is 0 0.200. And for this problem, there is no initial hydrogen ion and there is no initial acetate ion. Since it's a weak acid, some of the acid will dissociate. So at equilibrium, we'll have 0 0.200 minus x. That means we're going to produce x amount of hydrogen and we're going to produce x amount of acetic acid. Our next step is going to be to write out our K expression. So Ka is the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of acetate over the concentration of acetic acid. Oh, I put too many H's in there. Let's forget that that H is there. And we know that that equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So now we'll substitute in our equilibrium value. So we're going to have x times x in the numerator. That's going to give us x squared over 0 0.200 minus x equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Now since it's a weak acid, we're going to assume that our x is insignificant in our denominator. That'll make our math a little bit easier. We're going to multiply both sides by 0.200 and then take the square root of both sides. So x is going to equal 0 0.00189. And that's going to give us the concentration of hydrogen ions. 
Now we want to make sure that our 5% rule is followed. So we're going to calculate our percent dissociation. by taking x, which is 0 0.00189, and dividing it by our original concentration, and multiplying it by 100. And that's going to give us 0.945% dissociation. That's less than 5%, so we can assume that that x is insignificant relative to our original concentration. And the last question wanted to know then, what's the pH of the solution? So we're going to take the negative log of our hydrogen ion concentration, so the negative log of 0 0.00189, which will give us our pH. So our pH is 2.72. Now let's change the problem a little bit. This time we want to find the pH and the percent dissociation of acetic acid, but we're not starting with pure water. This time we're going to have sodium acetate in the solution. So we have 0 0.200 molar acetic acid in the presence of 0 0.500 molar sodium acetate. So our first thing is to think about what's in the solution. All right, well, we've got water. That's 1 times 10 to the minus 14. We've got sodium acetate, which we know is going to 100% dissociate. So we're going to have 0 0.500 molar sodium ions and 0 0.500 molar acetate ions. And then to that solution, we're going to add um, acetic acid, which is a weak acid. So we're looking at a common ion effect problem. So first we're going to write out our dissociation equation again. So we're going to have our CH. 3COOH going to H plus plus CH3COO minus, and then we're going to establish equilibrium. But this is where the problem becomes a little bit different. The initial concentration of this acetic acid is 0 0.200 molar. We haven't added any acid to the solution initially, so that value is going to be zero. But we're going to have acetate ion in the solution initially because it came from the sodium acetate. So we're going to have 0.500 molar. Okay, now our equilibrium is going to be established, so some of that acid is going to dissociate. It's going to produce some hydrogen ion and it's going to produce some acetate ion to add to the acetate ion that's already there. So we'll write our Ka expression again. We've got our hydrogen ion times our acetate ion over the concentration of our acetic acid equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. We'll substitute in our values, so this time we have X for hydrogen ion, 0 0.500 plus X for our acetate ion, and 0 0.200 minus X for our acetic acid. And that's going to equal 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, since we're looking at a weak acid, we're going to assume that those x's are insignificant. That makes our math a lot easier. We're going to have to multiply both sides by 0 0.200, divide both sides by 0 0.500, and solve for x. So our x is going to equal 7.2 times 10 to the minus 6, and that's going to give us our new concentration of hydrogen ion. We're going to do our 5% rule to prove that x is insignificant. So we'll take 7.2 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 0 0.200 times 100. And that's going to give us 0 0.0036%.
0.8%. And then we can calculate our pH by taking the negative log of 7.2 times 10 to the minus 6, which is going to give us 5.14. Now, compare the problem that we did before with this problem here. And look at what happens to the hydrogen ion concentration and what happens to the pH. Since we increase the acetate ion concentration, that's going to cause our equilibrium to shift to the left, which is going to decrease the hydrogen ion concentration. So compare the hydrogen ion concentration from the problem before with this problem and see that it's less. Since the hydrogen ion concentration is less this time, our pH is going to be higher. So compare the pH from this problem with the problem before. And then, since our equilibrium is shifting more towards the left, our percent ionization is going to be less, because less of our acid is going to dissociate. And that's true as well. And this is an example of what we call our common ion effect.